Okay, hun buns, the day is over with. And it is time to hightail it home. Be a part of the get along game and get along. Go on home. I don't know how you guys' day was. Like I said, I guess I say this almost every day. I guess until something changes. I had a pretty good day. Not too much. No muss, no fuss. Now, leaving the job. Now, most of the time, it's very common courtesy and to be polite. If somebody, if you know you hear somebody right behind you, you kind of hold the door. So, that person, you know, doesn't have the door just shut on them. So, you just hold the door because they just only like a few little steps behind you, right? Do me a favor, people. If somebody is courteous enough, kind enough, has some type of manners and tried to open or hold the door for you, you should say thank you. That is common courtesy. That's not their job to keep the door open for your happy ass while you walking right behind them because they don't have to. I can't stand people who do that. I Look here. If you heifers can't open your mouth, and I do mean male and female, I don't give a rat's butt about it. Use a heifer. When you can't open your mouth just to say thank you. Because nobody has to do that. They don't have, that's not their goddamn job. So you need to show some common courtesy. I can't stand people who do that. Crap. That gets on my nerves. That's the only part of my day that I can say that. That, that, mm, 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 mm. Make you just want to just look at people like, who raised you? I know you got, look, your mama, your daddy, your grandma, your auntie, somebody had to raise you. And for you to sit there and act like you don't know how to say thank you, there's a problem. We're not talking about little kids who are still learning how to say yes, no, well, by the age of two, between one and two. Oh, they know that word no very well. We're not talking about that. You're a grown person. You're my age, older, younger. Somebody raised you past the age of I, I say you give them a pass on, you know, about their manners, probably up to the age of seven, seven, eight. After the age of seven, uh, eight years old, I, I think you should really know about your manners because you know your do's and don'ts. You, you, you're learning well enough to be able to say, you know, oh, I apologize or wait a minute, hold on. Like I said, around that time, you know, past the age of seven or eight years old, you, you, you're, you're becoming, developing of, of your senses yourself and having, uh, knowing about manners. So, beyond that, that doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't, you know someone dropped the ball somewhere or you just became of an age and you'd be like you know what I'm just not gonna do it I don't care I'm not I'm not doing anything my other thing is if I'm walking down the street sidewalk store whatever aisle what I don't give a rat's but if you're staring and looking at me and I happen to have, I don't know maybe it's just a southern thing but even some southern folks don't do it. Uh, if we make eye contact and I speak, like if you speak to me, I, I speak back. If I speak to you and say hello or hi because you're staring in my direction or you're looking at me while we're passing of each other, then you should speak. But you know, this day and age, I guess people be like, well, I don't really know you. Well, you need to stop staring at me. We're not kin. I don't know you. We don't know each other like that. We're not kin. We're not related. So that that's my thing. That that's the I can say that's what 
you know, it's, um, they got, uh, as they say, who peed in your Cheerios? What beat a flung itself up your shorts? Who made your day? <laughs> it didn't make my day, but <laughs> it did peep me off. I, I can say that. It peeped me off. So, I'm on my way home. Um, and just try to, you know, relax and groove into my weekend. Um, I'm going to let you guys know now, unless I have something to do or somewhere to go this weekend. I'm usually only going to do these vlogs when I'm in the car. So, I'm just letting you know. It's usually only when I'm in the car. Unless something is really going on or something. And I'll be like, ooh, 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 ooh. Wait till I tell you this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if that's not the case, it'll be only when I'm in the car. So, um, this morning talking about how I used to, uh, my grandmother, mama, introduced us to the video games, um, and she also introduced us to, uh, different cultures of food, like, you know, growing up, you think that you, like, if you went to Taco Bell back in the day when they were like 29, 39, 49 cents. You know, I'm telling my age right now, but you get the gist, right? It's a very long time ago. I, we would have thought that that was Mexican food. Well, I can say I was truly introduced into like what Mexican food was, uh, or Spanish food or Spanish cultural food was, is when um, I was in the mm, tenth grade. And um, you know, you grow up with, with traditional things that your you know your mom might make, or you know someone that cooks for you. Um, you know, eating spaghetti, eating um, beans and rice, and you you know you eating the stews and the soups and stuff during the winter time. Um, you know, hot dogs. Yes, I grew up on um, what they call beanie weenies, pork and beans and hot dogs, or it was macaroni and cheese and hot dogs, um, you know, tuna casserole, tuna fish sandwiches, regular sandwiches, those type of things, but I got off the subject, but I'm going to get back. Saying all that to say this, my uh, grandmother, my mom, one day she made uh, uh, huevos from the with the uh, chorizo and um, that was the first time that I ever had something that sparked my taste buds like really like besides what I, I knew of growing up to eating like eating my mom's food or my grandparents food my aunties and stuff like that you'd be like mm, this is good you grew up eating you know Thanksgiving Christmas meal and all that type of stuff things that you you just are used to this was something different from me, for me. And I was like, I like this. It tasted so good to me. And she introduced uh, flatas to us, tamales, um, like I said, the chorizo. And those are things that, that were new for me. And I was like, I like this. So that was my first introduction into foods that weren't a part of my normal staple of what was, you know, we ate, you know, all the time. You know, growing up, like, uh, my mom would sit up there, like I said, would make spaghetti, uh, macaroni cheese and hot dogs, we would have tuna casserole, um, we would have tuna fish sandwiches, um, like pork chops, you know, cabbage, cornbread, those type of things, you know, we would have a heavy meal, sometimes, you know, it would be, sometimes we didn't 
have uh, enough to make a meal and my mom will make pots of like um, beans and rice. Growing up, eating a lot of beans and rice. Eating a lot of um, soups and stews. Uh, anything that was gonna stretch a meal, tuna fish. Um, I remember one time, and I'm sure my mom's probably not gonna be very happy with me sharing this story. But I remember we didn't have any lights on in the house. And um, only thing that was available for us to make because there's no electricity on so you can't cook. Um, we had some canned uh, tomato sauce, I think it was. Tomato sauce and tomato paste. And I remember my mom put it in a big bowl and she ran the hot water uh, and uh, let the water get really hot from the faucet and she would uh, run into the bowl with the tomato sauce and tomato paste she would add a little salt pepper and whatnot that was our tomato soup that's what we ate and uh, i remember different different things you know not all the time it wasn't a lot uh it wasn't a lot of times, but it was a, enough to where we did have with no lights. Um, I also remember one time when we didn't have any lights and I had to have the candle to go upstairs and I was in my room looking for something. And I can't remember if it fell on the floor or if I was just looking for it underneath the dresser. Either way, I was looking for something underneath the dresser. And I had the, um, the candle by me and I'm trying to look underneath the dresser well while I'm trying to look underneath the dresser and I turned my head and my hair got in the candle and was on fire and I'm like this trying to you know all like that trying to put it out and um, I just was like oh you know you you scared you shocked I remember we used to be on reduced lunch because, uh, like I said, lunch was like a dollar ten. Um, before it went up to a dollar twenty-five, but it was like a dollar ten for lunch. And we were on reduced lunch, and uh, not all the time we had the money for reduced lunch. It was three of us, and if my mom did give us lunch money. At a certain point in time, she would give us to us for the week, and we had to be responsible for making that stretch for the week. So, if you went to school and you want to act like you know you want to buy this or buy that, and your money's just going. I remember like going to the candy store. I used to, well, not the candy store, the um, convenience store at the corner across from school. This is um, middle school. And, um, I would get like different candies, you know, like the fireballs, the cinnamon sticks, um, the limon. That stuff used to be so sour. I had, oh Lord. We used to have, uh, my sister and I went like a few years ago. Uh, and we went to one of the convenience stores by the middle school we used to go to. And we tried the limon. You know, it used to be in a package and you would take it and you would shake it in your hand. And he'd be like this all day. All the stuff that you used to eat when you were a kid. You can no longer consume that now, okay? It will simply knock you the hell out. It will put you out of your misery. That lime on was so sour and salty. And I'm trying to figure out how do we eat this as kids? I can't even, like, ingest this now. I felt, I was like choking. I said, I don't, I don't understand how we ate this. I don't understand. It was so sour sour. Uh, they made it more sour. My taste buds have changed so much to where that, that mm, no, mm -mm, it was not my friend. It was not my friend. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not at all. So, um, I remember doing that because I used to play sports. You know, I used to run, play uh, volleyball, basketball, track all through junior high school. And I actually got into that on accident. You know, in elementary school and everything, you may be known as the fastest kid. And you 
know you have the opposite course and things like that, which I don't even think they do that for these kids now. But you usually have to go outside, and you have classroom against classroom that used to compete. And um, you have like a little obstacle course that you go through and everything. And uh, that would be like your exercise. And uh, that's, that's elementary. You get to junior high school. Uh, my neighbor happened to ask me, you know, will I go with her? She wanted to go up to the school to try out for volleyball. And she was in a grade level higher than me. Mind you, this, I'm like, this is during the summertime. I was going to the seventh grade. She was going through the, going to the eighth grade. And uh, I go up there with her. I was like, okay. And uh, the uh, coach at the time asked me, she's like, are you here to try out? I was like, I, I guess so. I wasn't really confident about doing it because I've, I've never played volleyball before. You know, you play crab soccer and whatnot <laughs> in elementary and uh, junior high, like in PE and stuff like that, but I wasn't playing volleyball. And, you know, we grew up doing like square dance, doing PE and stuff like that. So I said, uh, I guess so. So I tried out for it. And uh, I made the team for JV. She did not. And I had to take the thing home to my mom, you know, so she could fill it out and take me to go get a physical. Because I didn't know I had to have a physical in order, you know, when I came there that day, you were supposed to have your paper. I didn't know anything about it. Like I said, I wasn't going there prepared to do that. So that's how I ended up getting into playing sports in school. Other than that, you know, I was like a little tomboy growing up, like climbing trees with my, you know, brother and cousin, and, you know, climbing up on, up on top of the, my grandmother's house, and, you know, climbing up on top of the roof at school, you know, elementary school and stuff like that, uh, skateboarding down hills, wrecking and scraping yourself up, you know, being on your bike, doing stuff the kids do, going to play tag, hide and seek. You know, being on your bike and, you know, racing down steep hills and stuff. You know, you walk away with bumps and bruises and scarred up and everything. And, you know, that's what I was doing growing up as a kid. But, um, I did that. I played volleyball. Uh, and it just, you know, folded over into the next one, the next thing and the next thing. Which went from volleyball then went to basketball, and then from basketball, went to track and field, and then you're out for the summer until school is starting back up, and then you have to come in, you know, a couple of weeks before it's time for school to start, and, you know, start volleyball practice and all that stuff all over again, and um, I remember one time, we had lost a game, and, um, some of the girls on the bus, when we came back to the school, you know, was trying to pump it up and, you know, rally like we actually won the game. My coach was livid. Coach Rodriguez, she was livid. I still remember that lady because she was also my math teacher. But she was livid that the majority of them did that to make it seem like we won when we actually didn't. So when we got in that gym to go, you know, get our clothes and stuff out the locker to leave, she was like, oh no, you owe me 20. We had to do 20 laps before we could leave. We had to do squats and we had to, uh, well not uh, burpees, I forgot what they're called. When you're against the wall, and you have to jump and keep touching the wall. That. I don't remember what they're called. Um, we had to do that for 20 minutes and do 20 laps around the gym before we could leave. And she was like, I bet you, you won't do that again. You 
won't do that again. Don't ever do that again. Yeah, nobody ever did that again. No. So, that's, uh, <laughs> that's one thing I will always remember. But yes, Coach Rodriguez, she was also my math teacher. And how I got interested in, in math, it's always sparked me, right? When it comes to math and science. Math and science is kind of the same to me because if it has to do with numbers and, you know, equations, they kind of, you know, relate to me the same. And, um, when it, um, like, when I got to third grade, right, there was a teacher, Miss Flynn, love this woman to this day. I wasn't reading too well. And uh, Miss Flynn helped me with my reading. I'm sorry for getting like tear teary eyed, but she did. Miss Flynn helped me with that. She helped me with my reading. She helped me get my reading up. And she helped me with my math. And um, those are the two things that I was mainly ashamed of growing up. So, when she was, Miss Flynn was my third grade and my fifth grade teacher. And I know anytime I ever needed help with something, she was there to help me, even if she wasn't my teacher. Until we moved out, um, out of the city, and I, I wasn't going, well, not necessarily the city, I wasn't going to school anymore, because she was my elementary school teacher. And got to junior high, and I kept going by this one particular room that was over there by my, um, I can't remember if it was my history class or whatever it was, but I would go by this room and I would see people in there and I was like, I wonder what they're doing because it just seemed like they were doing something different. And this is Miss Rodriguez's class, right? And I come to find out that it was a pre-algebra class. And I was like, okay, well, how do I get in there? How do I do that? You know, I, I wanted to, you know, learn more. And that's one thing about me. If I if I get interested in something, I want to learn more of it. And um, I had to test to get into pre-algebra. So when I passed it in order to get into pre-algebra, that uh, became a path for me to excel more when it came to mathematics because I think if I never asked about it I don't think that that would have been an opportunity that would have been given to me or uh, on that that level being like in 7th um, grade 7th and 8th grade I don't, I don't think so I'm just being honest um I don't know what grade level that they introduce um, the algebra to children now and algebra and stuff like that, but I remember I had to test to just to be able to get into the classroom to do pre-algebra. And um, I appreciate it. Um, and Miss Rodriguez helped me along the way of um, excelling in my math. Um, it used to come to me, I could just, I can't do it now, just looking at something and know the answer. But I used to be able just to look at a problem, and I knew the answer. And I would just write the answer. And then they would be like, you know, okay, well show me how you got to that answer. Because you know in the back of the book, it would, on the odd numbers, most of the books, the odd numbers would be like the answer. That if you really want to do your homework, you just look in the back of the book back in the day and you get the answers. 
that will only be on the odd numbers. On the even ones, you would really have to figure this stuff out. Well, I'm not going to say I didn't take that shortcut all the time because I did. Um, I was very lazy when it came to, you know, homework and stuff. If I can look at it and just do it, then I would just do it. And, um, I remember she was at, uh, asked me, she said, how'd you get to this? I said, I could just look at it and, and know the answer. And so it took me a while. She had to help me, you know, um, from go from my head to paper of how showing me how to fully break it down and put it on paper because other than that I would just look at it and be like I know the answer and I would just write it I wouldn't break it down and go through the steps I wouldn't go through the formula of, of doing it I wouldn't do that because that was like a waste of time or I didn't feel like that's not how I got it I didn't follow the formula I just would look at it and know and um, so I remember I was in um, high school and I was in my pre-calculus um, class and the um, Mr. McCutcheon, that's his name, um, he would sit up there and tell me that, you know, I need to write out my, um, my work. So, you know, so they know people were, weren't cheating. Well, because I could look at it and just know the answer, I started doing my work in pen. I wasn't working with a pencil <laughs> by the time I get to, to high school and it comes to my math. I would just work do my, my work in pen. Everything's just in pen. And I remember him saying that I can't turn my work in like that. I said, well, why not? It's, it's, it's correct. It's right. And he was like, but you need to turn your stuff in in pencil. What if you make a mistake? I said, well, normally if I make a mistake, because the way I, I do things, if I make a mistake, I either put an X through the big problem and I start over. If I don't do that, then I find myself just doing my homework all over again on the page. And I'll do that now. Even when I'm typing a word now, you know how you can backspace and go back and add in the letter that's missing or something like that. I just, I'll erase the whole thing and retype the whole word. I don't go back and insert because then it, to me, it, you know how you look at a word and you be like, that doesn't look right. Is that right? That don't look right. So instead of just doing that, I'll just erase the whole word. And that's how I would do my homework, uh, my math. Homework is, um, I would just do it in pen. Turn it in. And I remember Mr. Armadi, he was my chemistry teacher. And um, we had to go to the lab or something. He had a whole bunch of formulas written up on the um, board. And he wanted the like uh, the answer to the equations and everything. And I would just look at it and it would just resemble math to me. I would just go ahead and write down my answer. And I remember somebody asked me in class one day, they was like, You understand this? Yeah, it just it reminds me of math. And I said, so it, it's, I just look at it that way and I just, you know, write my answer. And the same thing like when I took French um, in school. I could write it better than most of the time I would say it. And um, I don't know, it just made sense to me that way. And, um, I guess this, to me, I just, you know, I just knew myself to be a weird child. And, um, I just did things differently. I just did things differently. Um, I still do things differently now, you know, if I'm doing something or if I'm being shown something in a certain way. And um, if I can figure out a different way to do it and still come up with the bottom line or improve what I'm doing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm, I'm, I, I will do that. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Um, I just look at things differently or I learn things differently. And uh, that was one thing, but 
I, I know I got way, way off the topic because I was talking about video games. Went from video games to talking about foods that my grandmother introduced to me and I don't know how I got on the other subjects, but I'll do that from time to time. So y'all might have to catch me, but like, uh, can you go back to this subject? Cause you done ran off all the way in left field. You over there on that playground by yourself. So it happens. But um, from there, like I said, it, when it came to eating, and if it wasn't for uh, my grandmother, mama, introducing different cultures to us at the uh, stage and age that I was, by the time I moved to, uh, we moved to California, I wouldn't have been so interested in trying other cultures' food. Because I would have just stuck to what I know. You know how you, people don't go, it's almost like when people don't go to other people's house and they don't eat other folks' food. And depending on who you are, I ain't going to eat your food either. And, and that's just me. I'm not, if I, don't, I don't trust you like that. I don't know you like that. I'm, mm -mm. Potlucks at work? Mm, heck. Uh, I'm about to do it in Whitney's voice. Hell to the now. Uh, uh, no, no, mm, 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 I'm not, mm, mm, no, mm, mm, not, mm, mm, not at all, but, um, like I said, that opened doors for me, and California just expanded my, uh, taste buds, my palate, even more, because I was able to try a whole lot of other different cultures, food and um, to me look here lady lady I'm not trying to do a meet and greet with you your your lane ends it merges so you have to merge in front of me or merge behind me I don't know what to tell you but I'm not doing a meet and greet with you on this street I'm trying to go home like I said before a meet and greet is an accident okay So, um, that got me interested in trying um, Indian food, um, got me interested in trying um, Thai food, uh, different Asian cuisines, uh, different uh, Spanish foods, um, trying, um, like I, said, I think I said Indian food. I, I don't know. I can't really say if I tried Ethiopian food. I've tried African food. Um, one of the, my co-workers years ago, she made uh, peanut butter soup. And it was good and spicy, but it was so good. Okay? Um, this 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 no joke. It was, it was delicious. So, I like good food. And my family can tell you this. I like good food. So, if I suggest a place to you, or I'm excited about going to go try a place, it's because I'm excited about good food. So, um, for me, um, like I said, my family can tell you. If I tell you it's a place that we got to go try, but if I suggest a place to you, it's because their food is good. I'm really not going to lead you astray. Now, this one place that, I, I take that back, there was two places in the past couple of years that I went off of a review that's off of uh, the city's website of like uh, places that they, you know, highlight different restaurants and stuff. And I went there co-worker and I went to one place and we could not understand how they had the hub awards and all that type of stuff. He was like for what? This ain't all that. I was like okay yeah I won't uh, mm -mm. so we tried and this was a burger place so we tried another place. This is before I gave up meat okay. 
before y'all start coming. And if you don't know already, and I don't need your advice, I don't need your, you know, uh, anything of somebody want to come at me with any negative comments. What you do is your business. What I do is mine. What I eat and consume is my business. What you eat and consume is yours. How you live your life is yours. How I live mine is mine, okay? To each his own. So unless yours is interacting with mine and has something to do, you know, initially crossing paths with me right then and there, like, you know, we in the same, we don't carry the same gene pool. So basically put it that way. And, and most of the time my family can't tell me anything because if I ain't going to eat it, I ain't going to eat it, period. Um, so with that being said, this is before I gave up meat. And we went to a Spanish restaurant and we ordered something to eat from there. And one, my food was dry. And my co worker's food, it seemed like they took the whole bottle of chili um, powder or chili paste, whatever it was, and saturated her food with it. And it was so greasy to where she really could not eat it. And we were like, yeah, we won't be coming back here again. And it was a place that another co-worker had suggested to us to go try. In a restaurant. And, you know, I heard people talk about it. And I know a lot of people went there to eat. Baby! Cats, dogs, and birds won't eat your food because where we parked at was in the back on the side. And you know how some people, you know, like uh, you may drop your food here and there or somebody or wasted their food or whatever. If the cats, dogs, and birds will not go peck at your food, that should have been a sign to me not to even go inside that place to eat. That's just me. Call it what you want, you know. But for me, I, 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 that should have been a sign because we both ordered the meatloaf. We was like, okay, we'll try the meatloaf. I don't know what that was. Because to me, it was like dog food. Not that I know what dog food tastes like, but I, you know, it resembled the look of it. And we had to ask the man, what kind of meat is this? And he was like, oh, it's a mixture between, he said, um, ground beef. Um, pork and something else. I want to say he was saying veal, but I don't think that's what that was. What I think it was is because they had a whole lot of breadcrumbs and fillings in there trying to make a big pan to make it stretch. And I'm, I'm not knocking if you're going to do that. If you're going to do that as a restaurant, if you're going to do that and make that at home, that's your business, right? Uh, if you are not seasoning it right, you haven't perfected your your recipe. Cause to me, no, you need some help. You, you need help. You need Jesus. Cause that wasn't your friend that day. That wasn't my friend that day. I was like, oh my goodness, oh 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 no. I was like, we will never. So I take that back. It's been three paces in the past couple of years. Before I gave up meat, that I was like, I, I won't go back. Mm -mm. I won't go back at all. Not to save my life. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. No, not at all. Some places you just be like, mm -mm. you need to go back and start over. Start from scratch. You need Jesus. Ask him, come on in the kitchen, come on in and help you. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, but your cooking skills need help. Needs help. You need all the help you can get. You can call on your ancestors. Call your mama. Call your auntie. Call your grandma. But you need to call somebody. Because whoever working in that kitchen needs to be fired. Just straight up. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. You can't cook? Please come out the kitchen. Come out the kitchen. Your skills need to be elsewhere. Not in the kitchen. Not at all. And if that's somebody's recipe of the restaurant, and if you try to tell them, warn other people. Warn them, especially if you ain't working there no more. Warm them because mm -mm, mm -mm, you need some help. And I say that to say this because I went to a well known restaurant 
uh, chain. And let's just say that there was supposed to be a soul food place. Please tell me why that um, their so-called greens were sugared down like if they made collard green Kool-Aid juice soup whatever I said mm -mm, whoever in the kitchen cooking this need to be fired they need to be fired mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't know what you're doing but mm -mm, not help mm -mm. no not at all mm -mm. it's not happening hold on let me check my mail okay so no Mm -mm. You don't know how to cook? Please stay out the kitchen. Please stay out the kitchen. Don't go nowhere, anywhere near that kitchen. At all. But yes, I don't know what they were making and who they were making it for. But that would be a no. That would be a no. If you can't make grits right, don't make them. Don't make them. Grits are not supposed to be like soup. Mm -mm. No. Don't make them. You can't make them. Don't do it. You don't know how to season them right? Don't do it. But I know that was one thing from that uh, soul food restaurant, that one in particular. And they didn't last very long uh, here. They did not last long. They were gone. I think within a, a year or so, if it was that long. So, then the, uh, the fish lacked seasoning. That needed help. That needed major help. Their fried green tomatoes. I don't know who they were frying them for at all that needed seasoning. Look here, when you come to a southern restaurant, southern food, you don't season your food. Now that's your business. And you know, people are gonna have to sit up there and abide by, if they come to your restaurant, that's how you make it. If you say there's no substitution, then there's no substitution. It is what it is, right? But if I figure like this is not the business, and I'm picking at my food. If I send my food back, I don't want anything else from the kitchen. Nothing. Because now I'm thinking that you're going to do something to the plate. And then the other thing is, whatever it is I just ate didn't taste right, I don't want nothing else from it. I'm just going to politely pay for what it is that I have and I've eaten or drank. And I'm going to go ahead and take myself home. I might have to stop somewhere else and get something to eat. But no, no, no. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. I'm just saying, mm-mm. By the way, y'all, I done made it home. So I am going to go and unwind and enjoy my weekend. Oh, and the movie I did watch yesterday, Netflix. It was Six Underground. That was a very good movie. That was very good. I liked it. Michael Bay did his thing. He did his thing. That was a very good movie. A lot of twists and turns and everything. That was it. You did good. Um, so... Uh, let me figure out what I'm gonna do for this weekend because I haven't made any plans and most likely I'll just be sitting up there in the house and enjoying my weekend and relaxing. That's the only thing I can think of. Now, like I said, something comes up and I decide to go and get dressed and leave out. But other than that, you guys enjoy your weekend. You enjoy the rest of your day. You get home safely. You stay blessed. And I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs>